Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to video 18 in this series on creating an RTS game in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, despite what I said in the last video, I know what we're doing. We're finishing out our preview system for our constructions. We have one thing left to do, and that is to determine what happens when we don't want to build that building, or any building. We want to build a different building, or we want to get out of the build mode all in for whatever reason. We need to destroy the preview. So we'll take care of that today. And then in the next set of videos, we'll move on to the actual constructing of the buildings and then the sort of running of the built buildings. We'll be more on that in later sections because we'll need resources and units first. Okay, so if you've liked the series so far, please hit that subscribe and notify bell below. It really does help the channel out. And, you know, that like button. Now, I meant to say that in the other order, but I'm going to keep it that way for now. And if you want to take your support a bit further, consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. I'll give more details on that at the end of this video. All right, open up your projects now in Unreal 5.3, and we'll make a start. Okay, so here we are back in the editor. We're just gonna take a quick moment to see the sort of issue we're gonna be addressing. If I hit B right now, we have our little preview building. Now, if I hit B again, oh, we have the old building and a new one. And if I hit B again, I can keep doing this, you know. It goes on for a while. So we need a way to get rid of these when we don't wanna build them. So if we switch whatever building we're gonna go for, so from barracks to say silo, or, you know, we want to exit build mode. So we need both our building master and our building manager. Now, I am probably gonna clip the part where I mix the word manager and master together uh, and post that up on YouTube. So if we go to our building manager, we have this destroy preview event down here. Now, what we need to do with this is actually create a bunch of functions. And I'm just gonna walk us through what we're gonna have. First, we're gonna validate, and we can do this now, that there is actually a building that is filled for a reference there. So we are going to turn this into a validated get and plug that into there. We will call from our building ref a destroy preview function. And this will allow us to, well, destroy the preview. A, we'll clear this ref then, and then we'll clear our previewing status and clear our timer that we set up here. Now. I've been thinking about something and I might change how we approach some of this in an iteration video. But the entire idea behind how I've been running this series is that I want to make sure we only have hard references where we need them. And hard references get copied into other classes that have hard references to them. Why does this matter? Well, we have this building ref here and it is currently set to the BP building master. Now, if I go over to our building manager and I go to our size map, we can see that in the building manager, if we look at the reference viewer here, we can see that the actual things that we are using, the actual blueprint itself is under 200 kilobytes. All in with our standard macros, the four loops, we're still under a megabyte. The largest part of this 1.6 megabytes, which to be fair, isn't all that much, and a memory is also 1.6, is this building master. And we can get rid of that reference by using interfaces. Now, we might do that. And the reason why I'm thinking about that is this building master has a hard reference in this building manager. Now, where is this referenced? In our player controller. So if we go to our player controller and go to its size map, well, if we look, we can see our UI, which is what we expect. We can see our pawn, which is what we expect because one, the UI is owned by the controller. So we're gonna have a hard ref there. And two, I've already decided earlier on that, hey, I'm fine with the hard reference here as we talked about. We then have our standard macros. Our, sorry, our standard macros are up here. We have our self, which is fairly small, our standard macros, our input bindings. I don't know what these three are. I'm not gonna worry about them. But if we look at the building manager, nearly half, so 1.2 megabytes of 3.3 megabytes comes from our building manager. And of that, more than half comes from our buildings themselves, the actual blueprints for the building master. 
So we are getting that hard reference in our cam in our controller. So we might want to address that by changing how the building and the manager talk to each other. The other thing to be aware of, and I meant to mention this in the video, but I forgot to, is actually how we are doing our buildings. Now, I'll say this data table approach is what I actually often use. Now, there is a minor difference, and it is in our meshes, for example, and any icons I might have. So if we go to our structures for this, let's just take a look at the building structure. These are all hard references, these static meshes, and they add up. So like if we bounce back to the data table really quickly and browse to it, control B, by the way, for those of you who don't know, and look at the size map, I said reference viewer earlier, we can see that most of this, so 210.2 kilobytes out of 332.8, is just our static meshes and the materials for it. Well, we can get rid of all of that really easily. The way we get rid of that is instead of using a object reference for a static mesh, we use a soft object reference. This means that we'll have to load it in on the fly, but it's not being stored in memory. Now, I'm not gonna get into that in this tutorial. I will say in all my C++ projects where I do this, that is my standard approach now. In fact, in some of my marketplace products, that is my approach. All right, so I just wanna talk about those things so you're aware of them um, and that we might be making changes to the building manager down the road, but now you're aware. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do, as I said, is we're gonna validate that we have a building ref, and then we want to destroy that building. And we're gonna do it in the actual building itself. So I'm just gonna double check that I haven't created this yet. I have not, I don't see it at least. So we are gonna create a function called destroy preview. Also, I just wanna go back here really quickly. Okay, so in my prep file, I hadn't categorized a couple of things. I just wanna make sure that I had done so here. So we're gonna name this destroy preview. This will go into the preview folder. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get our current mesh, our current building mesh, which I actually have spelled wrong in the prep file. I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet. And we're gonna do set static mesh. And we're gonna set our static mesh to null. And the way we do that is by putting nothing in here. So what's gonna happen is when we destroy our preview, we're gonna hide the mesh we're getting rid of the render call for it. We're not rendering it. I mean, we could do hide in game or set visibility to false. I just wanna get rid of the mesh so that we have nothing there. Then we're going to call our set entrance. So we're gonna set our entrance to be zero, 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 pretty much what it is. If we go to the viewport now and find our entry point, I'm not even sure where it's at. I'm not able to see it and F is not working. Okay, so wherever it's currently at, which is relative zero, 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 it's going back there. I went to the wrong thing, back to destroy preview. And then we're gonna do same for the collision area. We're gonna set the collision area. So again, we're zeroing it out. That way it's all in one contained spot. Um, and the reason for doing that is to make sure that we aren't leaving things floating out on the map that aren't garbage collected yet, because sometimes it takes a bit for things to actually be fully removed. Okay, so after we've addressed getting rid of the mesh, making sure that our collision and entrance areas are relative to the center of the building root there, we're gonna get rid of any rotation we added. So we're gonna do set actor rotation. We're gonna get it back to its zero, zero, zero rotation. And then we are going to call destroy actor. All of these earlier steps, and this might also be partially from issues I ran into in my replicated version of this, is to just ensure that we have nothing visible, nothing on the map that's gonna be in our way, and that everything is back to its default. And then we're getting rid of it. I mean, I would love to get rid of all of this and just go into destroy actor, but I found these little steps help prevent issues. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go back to our building manager, and we're gonna call up let me just make sure I do a quick save. All right, and now we're gonna call up destroy preview. So if it's valid, we're destroying the preview. We are then going to clear our building ref. We're gonna set this to null. So if this has nothing plugged into it, we're null, which means it is not valid. So we are invalidating this. We are then going to take our set is previewing, and we're gonna set that to false because we are no longer previewing. We have destroyed the thing we were looking at. And then we are going to get our preview timer handle. And we are gonna set this to be cleared and invalidated so that we are no longer running that timer. Right, 
let's go ahead and make sure this actually works. So I'm gonna hit play. I'm just gonna move a little bit further away from the divot and mountain. And I'm gonna hit B. There we go. I hit B again. And you notice there's a little flicker. Let's see if I can get it there. Yeah. So that is a building respawning. I keep hitting B and we're good. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do a little bit of a test here. And what we are going to do instead is go to our player controller and we are going to do a flip-flop. And the first one we're gonna do is we are going to do on our flip-flop, we are gonna do set preview. We already know it's working, or at least I do, but I'm gonna demonstrate this further. And on our B, we're gonna pull out the building manager and we're gonna do destroy preview. So we are gonna call up this function. And yes, the destroy preview is a name of a function in both the building manager and the um, building master. Also, I'm vertically aligning these by shift A. I only recently learned that hotkey as long as I've been doing this. All right, we have an invalid input. Oh, sorry, I need to delete these out of here. I thought I had deleted all of them between the videos. And this is a quick note here, the differences I was talking about, why I wasn't worried about the sizes of these. And I'm just gonna move them into the correct spot. So I do that in the last video, I never did. But here we are doing it now. All right, this is, this one actually is gonna get expanded. All right, I will worry about actually getting that to look nicer later on. I'm not worried about it right now. Okay, sorry about that. Now we compile again. Now, if I hit B, and I'm just gonna bring this up here so we can see it, I hit play, and then switch this to our actual controller. All right, and then I hit B, we see it goes through the A, and if I hit B, we're no longer you know, previewing anything, it's gone. If I hit B again, there it is, and it's gone. This is kind of the premise that we're gonna be using for entering and exiting the preview system, except for we won't be entering the names hard-coded like this. We'll be getting it from a widget, which we'll take care of at the end of this section. But that takes us through everything we need to do to finish out the preview section so far of our construction system. As I said, in the next video, we'll be doing the, okay, I found a location I wanna put my building. Now, I wanna put it there. And all the things that have to go through at that point, from setting the new actor to that location, to putting in the first mesh, to starting up the timers for construction and the choices around where we're gonna put some of those things and why we're putting it there instead of other areas. All right, that said, if you've liked this video, make sure to hit that like button down below. Again, it really does help the channel out. I can't stress that enough. Same for the subscribe and notify icons. Also, it helps you out. It helps other devs out. It helps me out. And finally, again, if you want to take your support a bit further, consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. Patreon sponsors at upper tiers get instant access to completed and ongoing projects. At other tiers, Patreon members get access to completed projects. And at all tiers, you get input onto topics I cover, into special events, and things like that. All right. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.